Thank you for tuning in to part two of the two-part video series discussing triplet repeat disorders and molecular diagnostic techniques. This series was created by Talia Silver and Abney Ojla, students in the Medical Genomics Master's program at the University of Toronto. In the last video, you were introduced to Fragile X Syndrome and the Southern Blot Method for clinical testing. Now, in part two of this series, we will be discussing the triplet primed PCR method, how to interpret electropharogram results, and the benefits and limitations in the use of triplet prime PCR as a diagnostic tool. We will also introduce some future directions of what is currently being developed for repeat expansion diagnosis. Recall that Fragile X syndrome is caused by an expansion of a CGG repeat within the 5' prime untranslated region of the fMR1 gene. Standard PCR methods are unable to aid in the diagnosis of disease as amplification of the CGG repeat is impaired due to the high CG content and the length of the region in carriers or affected individuals. For many years, the only test method to elucidate the size of the repeat was southern blotting. The development of triplet prime PCR offered a solution to the previous challenges with PCR. The triplet prime PCR method was created by John P. Warner and colleagues in 1996 for the detection of CAG repeat expansion in a number of human genetic diseases. There are multiple subtypes of the multi-prime PCR method. Triplet prime PCR is one of the methods that tests for triplet repeat disorders. The method employed is dependent on the repeat disorder being investigated, but the basic principles underlying multi-prime PCR remain the same for other disorders with similar repeat expansions. This method is based off of the method developed by a surgeon for the Asurgeon PCR-CE FMR1 kit. We are not affiliated with a surgeon and do not have any conflicts of interest to report. In triplet prime PCR, three primers are used. The forward primer contains a fluorescent probe and binds to a region flanking the CGG repeat. A second forward primer, the repeat primer, binds within the repeat and a reverse primer that can either bind to a region overlapping both the repeat and a flanking region or just the flanking region as depicted in our diagram. As the PCR reaction proceeds, the repeat primer can bind randomly along the repeat, resulting in amplification of fragments of variable lengths, producing a characteristic ladder in the output. The larger the region, the wider the ladder because the repeat primer has more possible binding sites. That also means that the signal for each peak in the ladder is lower compared to a signal from a shorter target region with fewer possible binding sites for the repeat primer. The output of triplet prime PCR is visualized with an electropharogram. The electropharogram is generated using capillary electrophoresis and separates the fragments according to size. The x-axis depicts the fragment size. Much like how the southern blot can be used to stratify individuals using fragment size, the electropharogram can be divided into the same categories of normal, gray zone, premutation carrier, and full mutation expansion. The y-axis measures the relative fluorescence of the fragments. The PCR products are detectable with high sensitivity due to the fluorescent tag incorporated with the forward primers. The greater the relative fluorescence, the greater the number of fragments of that size. Looking back at the pedigree from part 1, we can see how the electropharogram output varies for each individual, detecting no mutation, a premutation, and a full mutation. Pay attention to whether we are reading output from a male or a female. Let's begin with the electropharogram for individual 1-1. One, one. This individual is a male with a premutation expansion. We can see a distinct ladder formed using triplet prime PCR in the left-hand portion of the output. This corresponds to the multiple fragment lengths generated by the repeat primer binding randomly along any section of the expansion. When the polymerase is able to extend across the entire expansion from the forward to reverse primer, there is a distinct fragment generated that corresponds to the full length of the expansion as seen by the peak at 740 base pairs. This peak tends to be wider compared to the shorter unexpanded allele because the polymerase can still have slight slips and stumbles as it extends the full length region. The exact size of the expansion is calculated during the generation of the electropharogram. This next electropharogram depicts a typical output for a normal female. 
there is a small ladder present. However, the peaks are confined to the green zone of fewer than 44 repeats. The largest peak stems from the standard forward and reverse primer, amplifying the full repeat region. Now, considering the fact that both this individual and her father have the same premutation expansion allele, what differences can be seen in the output? Since this individual is a female, she has two copies of the X chromosome. As a result, we see two distinctive peaks, one in the normal zone and one in the premutation zone at around 740 base pairs, highlighting the difference between the electropharogram output for males and females. Finally, this electropharogram depicts a full mutation expansion. Again, one can see that the characteristic ladder along the left-hand side of the electropharogram is very wide due to the varied amount of fragment lengths generated from the repeat primer. There is also a peak close to 940 base pairs which depicts the full mutation expansion generated using both the flanking forward and reverse primers. Repeat expansion is associated with methylation that silences transcription of the fMR1 gene and causes the fragile X phenotype. It is important to note that methylation status cannot be determined using triplet prime PCR alone. Once the length is determined to be fully expanded with triplet prime PCR, Reflux testing must be done with a separate methylation-specific PCR kit. This extra step can confirm that it is unlikely any fMRP is expressed. Interpreting the output of triplet prime PCR is further complicated when one considers the potential for AGG repeats within the CGG repeat region. Like the name implies, an AGG is present within the CGG repeat region. AGG repeats are common. And while they are not a factor when analyzing southern blots, they do lead to a region that is sometimes skipped by the internal primer. This leads to a decrease in the latter peak height, as can be seen when comparing these two electropharograms. Some of the benefits in using triplet prime PCR include the fact that this method can be applied to a number of repeat disorders. It is also a less laborious method that does not depend on radioactive probes, and uses more modern and standard lab equipment. Little DNA is required and it has a high sample throughput. Interestingly, since there is such a low sample requirement, this method can be used for single cell testing and this can have utility for pre-implantation genetic testing of embryos. One of the major limitations for the use of triplet prime PCR, at least in the case of fragile X testing, is the fact that methylation status cannot be detected with the primary test. Furthermore, triplet prime PCR is unable to elucidate the exact size of very large repeats in other repeat expansion disorders, which can pose a problem if one can't accurately determine the difference between a premutation and a full mutation expansion. Until recently, whole genome sequencing had been considered unfeasible as a means to detect repeat expansions due to its reliance on PCR for library prep and the difficulty in mapping the regions to accurately determine length. However, Algorithms are being developed and validated that may make whole genome sequencing more amenable to triplet repeat disorders in the near future. Some examples include Extra, Expansion Hunter, TreadParse, and Stretch. So far, these algorithms have been shown to perform with differing levels of sensitivity and specificity depending on the category of repeat expansion. If these algorithms can be assessed to have high precision, sensitivity, and specificity, it will be possible to replace triplet prime PCR with whole genome sequencing as we look towards the future where whole genome sequencing becomes a first year clinical test for any ambiguous phenotype. This concludes our video series on triplet repeat disorders and molecular diagnostic techniques. Thank you for listening.